Okay, so in this video, you are going to learn how to become a genius master magician inside of Framer. And what do I mean by that? Well, you're going to learn how to do things that wouldn't be normally possible. But why is this a thing? Why can't I just do anything in Framer? Well, it's because you're not really developing in Framer. You're not like writing code with your keyboard to do things. Well, if we were you know, developers writing code, we could do anything. However, we're using a no code tool because we're designers, we're drawing rectangles in a design canvas. That's what we know how to do. And so we have to use a tool that has its limitations. It has certain features and it doesn't have certain features. So we have a set of building blocks that we need to use together and twist and turn those features to achieve things that does not seem achievable. So in this video, you're going to learn this through a single example. And yeah, my name is Nandi. This is Frame University and let's get started. So don't be afraid, in this video we're looking at a really, really simple example, but you're gonna you're gonna learn a punch with this. It's gonna be just a single example. If you want me to show additional examples in future videos, make sure to drop a comment because there are many many things uh, that or examples that really show this same thing to you. So we want to basically achieve something. We want to achieve a Y offset on this button as we hover over it. So as you can see, I'm hovering over, nothing really happens, but what I want is it moving up a little bit when I hover over it. Actually, let me make this button a little bit larger. Okay, so as you can see, now we have a larger button, so basically our goal is to move it up. Well, you might say, Nandi, what the hell? Like, this is such a simple thing to do. Like, you just wrap the button in an additional frame, you press Command and Enter, and then you name this button or this frame button and within the frame that was called button is now going to be called content. And you simply set the overflow of the button to visible and now you can move this button around here. So you can just turn this into a component and on the hover state you can move it up, right? It, it, looks, it looks simple and it's, it just moves up, works perfectly. However, let me show you something because it's not as simple as you think. Usually our buttons are, you know, responsive and dynamic setups that we can reuse multiple times. So, you know, if I change this text here, the, the button is growing and getting smaller and larger. Um, we usually turn this into a variable. So we select the text and on the right panel, we create a text variable for the label. So let's see what happens if we duplicate this button and we write something else here, like by now, or let's just say by, because that, that's the, like, that's, that's the, that's a little small uh, something here. And you can already see the problem. This button frame is not really getting smaller, right? Like it's, it's just, it's just staying like that. And that's not really great. So you can see that with this setup, we don't really have a responsive behavior we cannot put, you know, elements right next to each other because, you know, this is what I want to see, but this is what I'm seeing and the width is on fit content. But since our absolute positioning setup and the key here is that the button within the content is absolutely positioned and, you know, it's absolute positioned on the hover as well so that we can move it up or down or anywhere. So this is why we have to, you know, twist and turn the features that we have to work around this and figure out a solution where we can achieve this in a way that we keep everything nicely responsive. So let me show you how to do that. If we undo a bunch to, to get to a version where we did not have the component, we can now see that, okay, we wrapped the button inside of a button frame. Within we have the content, which is actually the button. This is our starting state. However, we are gonna have a small difference. The button will actually be a stack. So we're gonna turn it into a layout because now we can set it to width fit and height fit. So it's fitting the content within, which is the button itself. So 
we're going to turn this into a component and then we're going to just call this default and basically if we create the hover state you could say that Nandi, okay you just set it to absolute here and you, you start moving it up it's not going to work because as soon as i turn this into absolute positioning this frame here right here the hover is not going to follow it because what what is it fitting there is no relative position element within it doesn't know what with the fit so we have to keep everything relative throughout this whole journey so again let's create a hover state and let's figure out a way to to offset it to the to the top because you know what we would want to do is just offset it to the top with the transform um and you know you you just click the content you go to the right and you transform but there is no there's no offset and this is what i'm talking about that framer has a set of features and it might not have the feature that you're looking for, but you can be a genius master magician inside the framer and achieve it. So we can see that we have depth. And if we understand what is depth, we can say that it moves the element closer to us or further away from us on the Z axis. So this is Z axis, this is Y axis, and this is X axis. So if we twist and turn these, we can actually get depth to be a y-axis. Let me show you how. Basically what we have to do is we have to wrap the content in an additional stack. So I'm gonna do option, command and enter on this content frame, and we're gonna call it content two. And this is gonna be also fit content, fit content, it's gonna be fit, 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 fit. So on this content two, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a rotation, transform, rotation 3D, along the x-axis, 90 degrees, so minus 90 degrees. Now our button is completely invisible. However, what we can do is we can select the content within and we can do a rotation on that as well, 3D, and we're just gonna rotate it in the opposite direction. It's not really visible. I have a feeling that it's because probably we have to set a preserve 3D, yes, that's what I forgot. So on the wrapper content too, we have to set preserve 3D, so they become like one 3D space, and that's how it's going to be able to, you know, rotate itself back and eventually reveal itself when we do an opposite direction, 90 degree rotation. So basically, we we just have a button here that that looks exactly how it looked. However, now in the background we have a completely different setup because now when we change the depth on the default hover state, we're no longer going to see an element coming closer or further away from us, but we're going to see it move up and down. So I'm going to select the content, transform depth, and as you can see, as I move it, it is moving up and down. And it's, and it's exactly what we are looking for. So I'm going to move it to the top, minus 10, and if we hover over this, as you can see, it just works perfectly. And to prove it to you, I can also show you that I can change or turn the content field into a plain text variable, call it label. And now if I go back to the home page and duplicate this and say, bye, look at that. Perfectly responsive. So yeah, basically that's it. It's that simple. I, you know, I said that it is going to be a really simple example but i think it really shows you that i think in many cases when you know you might be running into issues or limitations in framing when you see oh i want to set it to the to the top with an offset y but there's just not a feature for that in framer or oh i, I want to transform it that way or oh i want to do a scroll transform it like that and you're like ah there's a feature that's missing if it was included but it's not there but you know in many of those cases you could actually work around it and you know achieve what you want perfectly by just you know twisting and turning these uh, features and limitations inside the framework so yeah i hope that it really taught you a lesson if you are enjoying this type of you know content i can you know show you more of these examples of how you can you know get something in framework that isn't there by just being a little bit smart about how you use the set of features that we've been given. So yeah, just let me know in the comments. I don't know, comment 
I need more. And I don't know that you need more of this. So yeah. Also, if you have any questions, drop a comment. If you are looking for more framework components or tutorials or resources, stuff like that for completely free, you can go to framer.university because that website is basically that. It has a bunch of free resources for you, for anyone who's learning framer or using framer to create cool websites. So yeah, that's it for this video. Make sure to like it, subscribe for more, and I'm gonna see you in the next one.